Welcome to lesson three, working with selections. Um, this is going to be throwing a lot at you right now. Um, there's many ways to select. Selecting um, seems very easy um, or can be very difficult, but it leads to a lot more um, advanced concepts like masks, alpha channels. Um, so getting good at this is really one of the four legs on the table of Photoshop um, operating eventually as an expert. Um, you need to understand layers and working with them and selections are part of that concept of layers. We'll get in more in depth into layers in four. So what we have here, um, they changed this from CS6 a little bit. It used to be just compositing onto a plate. Um, all of these, the seashells, and we worked with the logo. But this, this um, iteration, it's this sort of frame with all of these shells with different backgrounds. So what they've done here is they've given you going to place them and I go rogue I don't follow the, the steps because again there's always three temperaments that Adobe software um, goes for the visual learner people who like menus and words um, there's always a different approach so everybody will do it differently as long as you get the proper outcome the best outcome it's fine however you do it so there is a set of selection tools the quick selection tool will get you the best job done and it can be your first go to selection. Um, try that if it doesn't work, even with adjustments, then you can move on. So quick select is going to work very well. Too well here with this. Um, uh, it's including the shell. We just want the red. So command D, deselect. If we should hit shift, we get this little plus. And now I've got both of them, um, both sides. Now I'm going to inverse. It's not going to work in this case. So what I'm going to recommend, I'm going to deselect. Go ahead and make this as a saved file. So I'm going to call this files. Because what we want to do to sort of trick the program is clone. This is what we're going to end up with, what it's going to look like. We're going to place each shell here with a silhouette and a shadow treatment which is just an effects on the layer, and put these little screws in the corners. I won't show you all of them, but I will show you the best way to get around and which things we're doing. Now I'm going to open up the start. That was the end. I'm going to open up start that isn't uh, vowels, because when I select, I want to bring this guy into the file over here. So when I inverse this, I just want, you know what, I'm not even going to do that. This is just being squirrely. Command D. I'm going to crop this really quick. And I'm just going to stick with this because all I want to do is isolate this off the background. And I'm going to use quick selection first. Then I'm going to say inverse, which is Command Shift I or under the selection inverse. It has all the quick keys next to it. And I'm going to cut this, make sure I got the whole thing. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go into my move tool. I'm going to place. And there it is. Now, it was a bit of an inelegant selection because there are settings that control how harsh or soft that is. So if you go into magic selection, my tolerance is at that. Your settings control how harshly that does that. So I'm going to say undo. And it's step backwards rather. It's not letting me undo it. When I go in there and select that, I'm going to add this little area. I want to make sure and the reason I'm hopping back to my magic wand is I want to make this tolerance a little less. 32 is the default. If you want to go in tight on a color, go to 12 or maybe 8. 
these are just some best practices. So I want to add in, there we go. See how I'm switching selection tools? I've gone into the magic wand. So now I'm inside this red, but red isn't going to be very friendly to my cream colored base shell. So I'm going to say select, modify, contract, one pixel, maybe two. But here, just start first with one. Now when I cut it, you see there's a little bit of a halo. Cut is command X, like a pair of scissors. There's a little halo. I cut out some of those pixels because when I came in here, my layer is showing some reverberation, some, some remaining pixels. So I'm going to throw that away. Go back to my move tool so I'm in the right. Um, and now I've got this here. Now you see there's a shadow behind it. I can also double click on this layer or go down to the bottom for FX and say add a drop shadow. I can control that. Always have preview on so you can see what you're doing. You could go in and add an inner shadow. Try and get rid of a little bit of this harsh cut here, which are settings I'm going to have to adjust. And if you see that, turn that on and off. That gives it a little depth, gives it a little blend. Um, just play with that a little bit because you don't want, again, it's orchestrating the illusion. You don't want it to look like it came from somewhere else. And the reason I pulled that from another file, and I'm going to say file revert so I can keep cutting from that, is usually you're not going to have just one file with all this reference, as you call it, all these different sources of images. You're going to have not all of these in one place. So next thing I'll show, so that was on a red background, so it was a very contrast between the cream and the red. So you have to accommodate that when you're silhouetting. If I'm cutting it off of a white background, it's very simple because it's easy to select just a white. So in this case, I'll demo the magic wand. Um, that's too strong, so I'm going to say Command-D. Um, that's not cooperating, sorry. It doesn't always quite go as you say. It's trying to demo something that I'm not dealing with. Okay, so throw that whole thing away. I don't want to add anything. So if I go here, now if you come in close, my tolerance is 12. You can always ask it to go a three by three pixels. You can always adjust these instead of one sample. Um, I'm going to inverse again. Selection, contract. Just stick with one. You don't want to get too far in and lose your details of your image. But see, that's a little bit less. I'm going to come in here. Oh, did I pull that off the wrong guy? Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry. Revert. So anyways, compositing can get a little dicey, especially the more and more and more you have. Keep stepping backwards because I pulled from my final composite name Val's, which is why it had the layer on there. Okay. Now go back to your move tool. you got to be in the right tool to paste it properly. Now I'm going to command paste because it still remembers the shell there. Just quickly go here. I'm in start. Make sure you're in start. That was there. I'm going to do my magic selection. Magic wand, sorry. Select, modify, contract. One. I'm going to pull that. And the reason I'm doing that is so that it come in and when I paste, it gives me a new layer. And you could call this shell plate. Actually, I wonder if these are supposed to be reversed. Edit, step back. Step back. Sorry, it's very repetitive. Um, yeah. 
just want to see where it's supposed to be. I think I switcherooed those. The plate should be at the top. No, there we go. So this guy is supposed to be down here. And this guy, you see how I have to click on the layer to move it? Should be here. And we're going to call this double clicking on the name, shell. And then we're going to call this shell plate. So when we look over at our, our layers, we know where it is. Now I could go in there and add effects, or I could just go in, right click, and copy my effects. Copy layer style, go into shell plate, say paste layer style, right click always, and now it's the same channel. It's a good way to keep things consistent when they come from different things. Let's save that real quick. Yes, yeah, say okay to maximize compatibility. Um, okay, so we did a dark background, the red, which could be all the way to black, which is a nice solid. Solid is easy. White background, again, solid is easy. It's pretty painless. Um, going from something with a shape that's on a modeled background. It's going to be very difficult to try and get that dark jade and that light jade. Again, always default and try your quick select first. It might work. You never know. But see, now I'm getting the same color value in my shell. You can use that tool to get the main areas and then go in and tweak with another tool. So like magic wand, I deleted that. Did you see that? I'm holding option to get this minus sign. Now, when I inverse, oop, let's, let's, let's get rid of that because see the color value between the light jade and this peach of the shell, very close. If you were to look in the channels, it's detecting, it's very close there. So now when I inverse, definitely I'm going to want to reduce here. Point of that little exercise right there that I showed you is, go back to your move tool, you can combine your selection tools. See that little halo? It went a little softer than that first very harsh cutting out. And this would be here. And again, go to your next layer, copy layer style, paste layer style. Boom. Okay, so again here, you would do different selections. Um, this is probably getting a little long-winded. Another thing that you could do is the polygonal lasso, which is under the lasso, and I always think of this like um, a cowboy with a uh, horse and he's lassoing the calf. You're gonna throw that lasso around what you wanna catch until it closes up and it becomes a full circle or whatever shape you've got, deselect. I find it very difficult to draw freehand in the lasso. Magnetic lasso tool, there's many illustrations where this works beautifully. Personally, I don't utilize it. That's not a judgment. You can try it. It sticks to mean color values or color values that are in common. Polygono lets you choose, obviously, even here, you could just try a circle um, and keep pulling till you got it right. Um, or if it didn't matter, you could just do a little halo around there. If catch with these, you can hold shift. You have to hit the right point. And then, um, that's saying that because I'm on the wrong one here. I don't have a second layer. In this case, duplicate layer. I was on the layer that had no pixels, but I'm going to duplicate retouch my background layer. Here I'm on the right layer. Now I could just cut the screw. And again, you can use that and say paste into new layer. Um, and I'll call this a screw head. 
And there I'm going to say Command T for transform. Make it smaller so it'll fit. And then it's still too big. What's it supposed to look like? Let's go check. And I'm using the um, arrow tools and the shift arrow. Now I'm going to hit return to get rid of those boxes. And yeah, those are pretty big. But that was his illustration where I cut it. See this little checkerboard pattern back there? That's transparency. That means there's nothing behind. Then I could go over to this layer, screw head. I could dupe this or just option drag. Option, command, shift. Oops, now I got both, sorry. You have to only be on one layer. Just option drag this guy, see, I'm on the wrong one. I just named that. See, if you turn the, um, the eyes on and off, then you can see what you're on. Kong shell. See, that's why I pull it in from others. Just easier. Okay, so let's just slide this up to the top. As I pull it, it gets a transparency again. Checkerboard pattern, my little grabber hand goes light gray. And now I'm on that. Now when I pull this and I say option, shift, it keeps it in line. So I'm exactly lined up. Then I could take those two, duplicate them together. Dupe. Duplicate layers. And now I've got the top two and the top bottom. So then I don't have to line those guys up. Okay, so that was just using the ellipse, elliptical marquee. There's the square, there's the lines. The line stuff is usually, I've never used that in retouching. That's for more like web stuff. Um, then we've got the polygonal. Polygonal is a bit of an of its own thing. An example really quickly, and then I'm going to end this, is you just take it. Oops, command D. And I am not the right one. There we go. And you just get this little line, and it will follow whatever shape you make. You go in and trace. It's basically like a pen. But then when you close it, see my little circle? That means close, or you can hit return. It will just pull that. Anyway, we'll do more of these types of selections. Anyway, so comp this whole piece up, and then we will do layers in four.